Hey everybody, I hope you're all well, and I just wanted to address something that I think probably doesn't get talked a lot about um, in uh, circles of people coming from overseas, so OFWs, or Overseas Filipino Workers, but I'll just broadly apply that to overseas foreign workers, so coming from anywhere to the U.S. And uh, what's that that's like, and what you experience, for example, the heavier topics of depression, loneliness, you know, kind of, I don't know, sometimes maybe feeling abandonment. Now, I've experienced that when I taught overseas, of course, probably different. I was younger, footloose and fancy free. Um, and I come from an individualistic society of the U.S. Not saying again that we don't have feelings or we're not family oriented or community oriented, community based, but it's different. Express it is, expresses itself differently. And, you know, maybe in that sense, I could be a little more detached from, you know, feeling lonely or depressed or, you know, struggling. You know, you try and learn different languages. You uh, you present a certain way. Uh, Americans, we get teased for the way we speak. <laughs> Other languages, sometimes the thick American accent comes through. And uh, just kind of things that I guess I've experienced in common with you. And it can not to say it's the same because, oh, car's going by, um, unlike you, uh, I wasn't leaving, I wasn't compelled to leave my country to get paid what I was hoping to be paid for the profession I chose. Basically, it was kind of a cultural exchange you know, that lasted many years and I was happy I did it. You know, it's always nice to go beyond what you know and you know, get to know the world and appreciate where you live, the world you live in, uh, and your own home country. They can give you a lot of perspective, I feel. But um, a lot of you, I guess if you didn't have to, you probably would have done this maybe for a year if you even wanted to do it, like leave your home country, what's familiar, what's comfortable, where you feel most identified with. So it's really different, and I, I, I recognize and I honor the differences that you all have had to consider um, when you've undertaken uh, either coming here and you're here now or just the whole process of getting here and all the obstacles and hurdles that seem to be thrown up, you know, either... You, know, you have to have so many years of teaching experience before you can leave. You have to get so much paperwork processed and so on and so forth. So um, how, how can you handle that or what, what should you do? Well, everyone has their process. You know, I wouldn't want anyone to say, well, I'm going to bury my feelings. I'm just going to, you know, uh, just jump into my job and just lose myself in that. Because remember what drove you here. For most of you, it is family. It is even extended family or uh, loved ones who really need that extra money that you're bringing in. So I'd say kind of reach into yourself and use that to drive you to do your job well, obviously, but also, you know, look for ways that you can maybe reconnect with community, whether, you know, the Filipino community, it's the one I know better. Uh, you know, if you live in an area where there's a lot of um, expats from the Philippines, and absent that, I mean, there's so many community things here in the U.S., however... I usually laugh. I mean, if you look here at what America is like, you don't, you don't see people. Or you've seen the cars that go by and you have, that have people going to places to commune and be with others, you know, either work or community centers or whatever. So, I mean, yeah, you probably want to get a license before you get here or have that, you know, have some driving experience. And, you know, if you can get a car or carpool with someone, you know, figure out some something or even walk or bike to wherever these places are, hopefully nearby that you can, you know, have that outreach and at least, uh, you know, until your family can get here or until you can go back to the Philippines to kind of recharge those spiritual and familial and community batteries uh, that you identify with more readily, you know, definitely do things like that. So again, not to tell you how to process everything, but maybe something to keep in mind to help you, um, you know, be or feel more centered in your life and not feel like, oh, you know, I just could, um, I got to power through this and, you know, just shut down my feelings. You know, don't, don't become what you're not and find ways to, you know, be who you are, even if you have to make adapt, adaptations and such. You know, if, if you don't live in an area where there's a big Filipino presence you know, or whatever um, nationality we're talking about, uh, maybe just find a way to, you know, share with the, commune with the locals, so to speak, and at least, you know, you know, find friends, maybe at work initially, but eventually branching out, maybe at your church or whatever community center or community involvement that speaks to you more. So just some ideas. I, I know I, 
I wish I could say, oh, it's going to be wonderful and, you know, the land of milk and honey that uh, people often say when they think about the U.S. You know, it, I, I wish I could say that for sure. I mean, for people it is. I mean, the money's good, but, you know, the other aspects, you can't really ignore them because that's what makes us who we are, right? That we're not just um, solitary creatures. Americans probably like to think we are. We're also communal. We're familial. And so just some things to keep in mind. So everybody stay safe, be well, and I'll see you in the next one.